If you own a Leica and mount camera, you need this lens. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome back to yet another King James episode. Now, a couple of things. This is my second time trying to record because for some reason, I forgot to press record on the first take. So I was literally sitting like an idiot in front of the camera for 25 minutes, when do I not? But hey, my mom always said, good things always take hard work. All right, man, let's get into this. So today we're gonna be talking about the lens that I feel like most, if not all, Leica M mount shooters should own especially because this lens comes in at just $450. Now for the quality that you get from it and you compare it to the prices of the other lenses, there is a massive gap in between. And even though this is not a perfect lens, it gives you about 95% of the quality that you would get from a super expensive Leica lens. Folks, the lens we're gonna be talking about today is the TT Artisans 35 millimeter 1.4, a spherical lens for the Leica M mount system. Now this, upon first glance, Whew, it is a handsome lens and I'm going to be talking a little bit about what comes in the box, the build quality, and then the sample photographs talking about the image quality. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you guys can decide whether or not this lens is for you. So a couple of weeks ago, I reached out to TT Artisans and I said, hey, I am getting my Leica M6 in the mail this week. Can you guys send me over the 35 millimeter 1.4 lens? I wanted to try it out. I've heard so much things about how good it is and you know, the size and the weight. I wanted to see what the hype was for myself. Now graciously, TT Artisans agreed and they sent the lens over for me to review. But you guys, I just wanna make this clear that everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video are my opinions. They are not paying me to say good things about it. You know, I always try to make sure that if it's good, it's good, I will talk about that. But if it's bad and it's trash, I'm gonna let you guys know as well. I try to keep it as real because this channel really is a resource and I want to provide you guys reviews that are as real as possible. So nothing is going to be fluffed up. These are purely my opinions and I'm going to let you know by the end of this episode whether or not I like the lens. Let's talk about what comes in the box. So here is the box right here. As you guys can see on the very front, it shows a little diagram of the actual lens. Here it has some TT Artisans tape. That's always a nice little touch. Then it just, you know, kind of extends over into the front. The rest of the box is pretty plain until you get over into the information side. Right here, it tells you what color lens you get. It says that the lens is 410 grams, which is a pretty heavy lens, just to keep that in mind, and a 49 millimeter filter thread size. So pretty standard box amongst lenses. You open it up, <laughs> you open the box up, and uh, it reveals another box inside. When you open it up, it has this nice kind of foamy, velvety looking material. And there are a couple of things inside of here that are detrimental to the performance of the lens. The first one being this little tool. Now this is a little screwdriver. I hope the camera can pick it up here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, it is a screwdriver that is very, very important. You don't want to lose this because this is going to help you calibrate your lens. Now, when you get this lens from TT Artisans delivered to your door, it doesn't come calibrated. And so you need to make sure you calibrate your lens before you start shooting it. Otherwise, you're going to get out of focus shots. Now, the way you do that is you use this little thing right here. And on the very back of the lens, you're going to see these three little screws. You're going to use this diagram right here after setting the camera up on a tripod. And then you're just going to adjust until you you calibrate the lens. It's a little bit of a tricky process, but to be honest, it's not that hard. Probably takes you five to 10 minutes. On the top part, it has this little holder that has a warranty card, and then you have the diagram for how you're supposed to calibrate the lens. Here's a quick little look of the scale that you're supposed to use. For a lot of people, I could definitely see this as being a drawback when getting their lenses. If TT Artisans were to somehow send their lenses out already calibrated, pre-calibrated to your door, that would honestly be great. But uh, that, I think that is one of the drawbacks initially that I thought of, you know, you do have to calibrate the lens once you get it in. But once you get the lens calibrated, you guys, you're gonna be rocking like a boat. So as you guys can see, man, this is the 35 TT Artisans 1.4, a spherical. Uh, it is a little bit of a taller lens. I used to have a 35 millimeter Summicron version 4 King of Bokeh, and even with that lens hood, it was probably this tall. Uh, that was for sure a smaller lens. The TT Artisans lens is pretty tall and it has probably to do with the 1.4 max aperture. The best way I could describe the visuals and just the aesthetics is it looks a lot like a Sumalux, as you can see from the design. It has that classic hyperfocal scale there on the bottom, 0.7 minimum focus distance, as well as your infinity, obviously as your far focus. In terms of the focusing itself, you have this nice ribbed ring that wraps all around the lens, which you can use to focus with. Uh, but on the backside, folks, you get 
your classic lens tab, which is great because it's the one with the two peaks and valley. You can you know, put your finger dead center in the middle and adjust your focus. Now in terms of focus throw, I think it's pretty standard. But one thing that I really like about this lens is it has a nice resistance to the focusing. My 35 millimeter Summicron had a weird focus resistance. It, I felt like it was a little bit too easy to knock out of place. Whereas this one, there is a little bit more resistance but it's not that hard to where you feel like, you know, you're struggling to focus from uh, close focus to infinity. On the very front of the lens here, you have your apertures. And I personally really love this design where the aperture is at the front of the lens and then your focusing here is gonna be towards the back. Obviously you have F1.4 as your max aperture and it goes all the way open to F16. On the back side, you have these two tabs on both sides that your thumb and index finger can simply just use to select your desired aperture. Now here's a very interesting feature folks, the lens hood, and it's a screw on lens hood. So you literally just screw it on like a filter. Now when you take the lens hood off, this is the lens right here. It doesn't make a big difference because of how small the lens hood is. Now let's talk about this a little bit. So there is a cutout vent hood right here, which allows you to kind of see in the viewfinder. Uh, the viewfinder blockage from this lens without the lens hood is not that bad. Once you throw it on, obviously because it is square, it is gonna take up a little bit more room, but that's why they opened it up with that kind of cutout here on the left side. Now, one thing I find silly about this lens hood is how shallow it is. It is extremely shallow. So if you're worried about using this lens hood and you know blocking out the flare, uh, you should be worried because it's not gonna do a terrific job. Personally, for me, I haven't really ran into many issues, so it doesn't really matter to me too much but I can for sure see how some people would be like, you know, what is up with this lens hood? It's extremely shallow. TT Artisans will also provide this lens cap right here, uh, which is gonna be for the lens hood itself, which is also made out of metal. And that's another thing that I forgot to mention. This has an all metal construction build, uh, making it a fairly hefty lens. I mean, when you take this thing off, it feels like a tank. And for being $450, it feels like a $3,000 lens. TT Artisans definitely did not skimp out on quality when making this lens, and it for sure shows with how heavy it is. And then on the front, look at that glass, you guys. It is absolutely gorgeous. And then you have a little bit of branding up here on the front to give some resumes. But like I was saying, you guys, all metal construction build it feels nice and premium it definitely doesn't feel cheap and so that is a huge plus in the build quality department now let's get into what is important how does the lens perform and let me just go out and say this right now this lens performs pretty damn good for being a 450 dollar lens it puts you in this weird category because you have lenses like the 35 millimeter 1.4 nocton from voigtlander or the 35 millimeter color scope bar which you can get for somewhere around the same price as this lens and then on the other side of the spectrum you have a little bit more expensive options like the 35 millimeter Ultron or even like the Zeiss Biogon 35 millimeter. But this lens sits right in the middle of the price range. And so for a lot of people who are in the market for a 35 millimeter lens, it kind of puts them in a tough spot. But folks, in terms of performance, this lens is extremely, extremely sharp, at least for my purposes. Now, I rarely shoot this lens at like 1.4 or f2. After looking at the scans, I noticed that the sweet spot for this lens is between f4, f5.6, and f8. When you shoot in this range, this lens becomes extremely, extremely sharp. At f5.6 dead center, the sharpness is there. I feel like it's just as sharp as my 35 millimeter Summicron or my 28 millimeter Ultron. And if you're someone who's just shooting casually or maybe even shooting family, or if 35 millimeter isn't your primary focal length and you just want a lens without having to you know, spend all of that money, the image quality from this lens is really, really good. So you're not gonna be disappointed if you end up picking this lens up. But where I feel like this lens isn't as sharp is at like, 1.4 or even f2 when shooting portraits along with you know the problems with calibration 1.4 is really shallow depth of field and so being able to capture pinpoint focus sometimes can be extremely tough so the examples that i had when i shot at like 1.4 or f2 some of my focus was a little bit off and so most of the times if i was trying to shoot a portrait i would shoot it at 2.8 and that usually solved up any of the issues portraits at 2.8 Everything else at f5.6, honestly, this lens is extremely sharp. Uh, when you push it up to like f11, f16, of course, with like any other lens, you start to lose a little bit of that sharpness, but purely just judging from the scans that I received back, whew, for 450 bucks, man, you cannot go wrong. And before we move on, you guys, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about the sharpness from this lens, just from the scans that you are seeing on screen right now? Do you think it's a sharp lens? How does it compare to your lenses? Let me know. All right, so I wanna give now my final verdict on the 35 millimeter TT Artisans 1.4 spherical because it's a very interesting lens. It puts you in a weird category between having to pick from your Voigtlander series, your Carl Zeiss, 
or going with the third party TT Artisans. I think this is a great lens for anybody out there that wants a 35 millimeter lens without having to pay a ton of money especially if it's gonna just sit on another camera or if it's not your primary focal length you know this is a no-brainer i think any leica m shooter should get it but if you're getting this lens as your primary lens only and maybe the only lens that you ever get it's a great option if you are just getting into the system. If this was my only lens, I honestly would be extremely happy with it. You know, if you're shooting casually, if you're shooting for like street photography, where you're just doing things for fun, this lens is all you need, especially if you're just uploading to Instagram or making prints, uh, you know, that you're gonna hang up in your home. This lens is not going to disappoint. It does the trick and it is, fairly inexpensive in terms of Leica lenses. But there is one instance that I wouldn't recommend this lens, uh, and that's to people out there who don't want to go through the process of maybe calibrating your lens, and I completely understand that because it can be a little bit tedious. And if you're someone out there maybe who shoots professionally and you need pin sharp looking images, uh, you, let's say you're gonna blow it up to the size of a wall. This lens is sharp, but it is not that sharp, if you know what I mean. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It really comes down to what you're gonna use this lens for. And if it's more for just like casual photography, everyday photography, and you don't wanna spend that money, uh, I think the TT Artisan's 35 millimeter 1.4 spherical is a great, great lens. I don't think I'm gonna purchase another 35 millimeter lens. I'm gonna shoot this one alongside my 28 millimeter Voigtlander, and that's pretty much going to be my go-to lenses but you guys that is going to wrap it up for my review on the 35 millimeter tt artisans 1.4 spherical version one i don't know if they're going to release a version two definitely try to get your hands on one of these lenses they are amazing drop a huge like down below if you enjoyed this episode and also comment your suggestions or questions about the 35 millimeter 1.4 i'm keen to hear what you guys have to say about it and you know how you guys compare it over to your other lenses let's start a discussion down below i'll see you guys all in the next one as always this has been king james till next time Middle to gang. Whew.